hello hello grade 10 so this is the exercise that i spoke about from the previous video so now in this video they request us this is the first question to sketch age of x right first of all when we, when we are sketching this um quadratic functions or parabolic functions we need to look at a a here equals to three and we note that a is positive so our function will look like this it's gonna be having a good day then now we look at the intercept, the y-intercept. The y-intercept, we let x equals to 0. Why do we do that? Because um, here at the y-axis, the equation of the y-axis is x equals to 0. You know, so it's going to be h of 0 is equals to 3 times 0 squared minus 9. You know, so h now of 0 is what? This is 3 times 0 squared is 0. 0 times 3 is 0 minus 9. What is the y-intercept? Is 0 and minus 9. This is the y-intercept of the function. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's look now for the x-intercept. x-intercept. For the x-intercept, guys, we let what? y or now in our case h of x equals to zero y because the equation of this line which is the x axis is y is equal to zero in our case h of x equals to zero you know what i'm saying so now it's going to be zero for h of x equals to three x squared minus nine so now we are back in solving for x guys so um there are many ways you can solve this 3x squared minus 9 equals to 0. So we're going to divide by 3 here. If we divide here by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, we're going to get x squared minus, okay, this divide by 3, this divide by 3, this divide by 3, x squared minus 3 is equals to 0. And then we can find the values here. Is your x there, your x there. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we're going to have plus 3 is the root of 3 minus the root of 3. So what are, what are, what are the x-intercepts now, guys? It's going to be minus the root of 3 and 0 and the root of 3 and 0. So if you do get funny values or maybe fractions, let not your heart skip a bit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, hey. Okay. Then lastly, guys, let's look at your turning point. Your turning point is where your function turns. So it's 0 and q. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so where will your function turn now? What do you guys think will be the turning point of your function? You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So where will your function turn, you guys? The function will turn at 0 and negative 9. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, if now we are to sketch the graph, we have to draw the y and the x axis. This is the y axis, this is the x axis right here. Then at negative root of 3, and then at the root of 3. Um, then here, at minus 9, your function is going to turn there. So now we can just join the points. It's going to be like this. It's going to be like this. So there we have your function of h of x, right? So if I can just ask here, what is the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry of the function, what is it? It x is equal to 0. What is the domain of the function? The domain of the function is x, which is an element of real numbers. You know what I'm saying? This is the domain of the function because this this graph exists everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Or you might say x an element from negative infinity to infinity like this. You know what I'm saying? Then what about the range of the function? You look at where the function exists vertically right here. So this function exists from here, from q, which is negative 9, upward. So the range of the function, remember the range is... Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a function of y values, right? So y um, is greater or equals to negative 9. Or you might say h of x, right? Is 
h of x is greater or equal to negative 9. So this, guys, is your range now. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, I think that's it for now. As far as this one is concerned, you know what I'm saying? Um, let us look at the second question that we have. So the second question that we have, we need to um, sketch. Sketch um, g of x is equal to 1 over 3 minus 1 over 3 x squared plus 3. So this is the second thing that we need to sketch now. So same applies here. Our a is less than 0, so our graph must, be, must look like this. I'm going to do this a bit quick. So the y-intercept, intercept, right? So you're going to have g of 0. We let x equals to 0 minus 1 over 3 times 0 squared plus 3. So this is going to equal to 3, guys. And then the y-intercept is going to be 0 and 3 in our case. What about the x-intercept? The x-intercept here, guys, you're going to let g of x or let y equals to 0. So, this now equals to 1 over 3 minus 1 over 3 x squared plus 3 equals to what? 0, you guys. Okay, then let's multiply by negative 3 everywhere. And then here we're going to get x squared minus x squared minus uh, 9 is equals to 0 right here. You know what I'm saying? So this is the difference of two squares now if we are to solve. So we've got x minus 3 and x plus 3. This is equal to 0. So what are the x-intercepts now? It's minus 3 and 0 together with 3 and 0. You know what I'm saying? There we go. And then what is the, I'm doing this a bit quick now, what is the turning point of the function? It's going to be 0 and q. What is q? There it's 3, right? This is where the function turns now. You know what I'm saying? So let's just draw the function. There is the function. There is the function. So at negative 3, the graph is going to pass. And then at positive 3, the graph is going to pass. Then here, this is the y-intercept negative 3, and this is also the turning point, so your graph will be combined like this right here. So there is your graph of g of x, you guys. You know what I'm saying? And also the domain is the same for this parabolic function. x is an element of real numbers, right? Or we can say x is an element of negative infinity to infinity. It exists everywhere. This graph continues up, 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 then the values of x, there is no value of x where the function is going to be undefined. Then the range now, we look, this function starts here and go up. You know what I'm saying? So the range is going to be, uh, okay, g of x, right? Then it's going to be g of x greater or equals to what? Negative 3, guys. Negative 3. So there is your range right there. Or you can just say, um, I don't know y or g of x um, is an element you include negative 3 until infinity whichever one you prefer and then if they ask now the axis of symmetry here is x is equals to 0 which is the y axis so your graph can be divided into two here in this line you know what i'm saying that is the axis of symmetry and then yes that's the domain and the range of your actual function you know what i'm saying Okay, cool. Um, let me just throw another thing at you while we're still at that. Let's say, let's say, guys, you were given a graph like this. Let's say they just gave you a graph like this. You know? Let's, let's say you were given something that looks like this. Where here it was 4, right? Then here it was 2. Then here it was negative 2. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. You know what I'm saying? And then they ask you now uh, as to what is the domain of the function. The domain of this function. The domain x exists everywhere. Right? So x is an element of real numbers. 
x or we can say x is an element from negative infinity to infinity so this means that it exists everywhere remember this continues without bounds to infinity even here to negative infinity so that's why we say all of these things then the range now guys so the range in this case um the range in this case okay just a second just a second i think there was something here Okay, okay. Okay, guys, so the next question is guess g of x is equal to negative 1 over 3x squared plus 3. First and foremost, we see here that a is equal to negative 1 over 3. So it means that a is less than 0. So you expect a graph which is a little bit set like this. You know what I'm saying? Okay, fine. And then guys now let's find the intercept the intercept right starting with the y intercept right so the for the y intercept we let x equals to zero so it's gonna be g of zero is equals to what g of zero is negative one over three zero squared plus three so this equals to three right negative 1 over 3 times 0 all squared plus 3 you guys are allowed to use calculators so just use your calculator then so g of 0 is equals to 3 so the y intercept is 0 and 3 right there is it right there then let's go now to your x intercept x intercept right your x intercept you guys we're going to say 0 is equals to mi minus 1 over 3x squared plus 3, you know. Okay, then when you get here now, obviously, you're going to solve for x. Okay, times everything by negative uh, 3. We're going to get x squared minus 9 is equals to 0, you know. Okay, so this is what you're going to get if you multiply everything by negative 3. So this is the difference of two squares so it's going to be x plus 3 x minus 3 right is equals to 0 right so what are your x intercepts now it's 3 negative 3 and 0 and 3 and 0 right here right and then if you are just given these things how would you know that these are x intercepts you're going to know that these are x intercepts because the coordinate the y coordinate is 0 you know what i'm saying what about your TP, your turning point? There is your Q there. So it's 0 and Q. Your Q is 3. You know? So now let's sketch, guys, our graph. Let's sketch our graph. So here at 3 is the Y intercept. Here at negative 3 is the X intercept. And 3 is the X intercept also. So this is Y. This is X. And also, this is where the graph turns. This is the turning point. I think I must just grab another color for this. Um, so this is your graph in a nutshell. I don't think this color is doing justice, but hey. Um, okay, cool. So this is your graph. This is how your graph looks. And then now, what about the domain of the function? The domain. The domain for a quadratic function, it's still x sort of x x is an element of real numbers so this function exists everywhere or you can just say x an element from negative infinity until infinity remember that this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten whatever whatever it continues until infinity even here that's why um you can also have this notation right here what about the range now guys the range of the function the function exists at negative one negative two negative three at 1, 2, 3. But at y is equal to 4, the function does not exist. So the range from negative infinity actually, y, or you can say g of x is an element from negative infinity until 3. You know what I'm saying? 3 you include because that is where the function is. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so this is the range of the function, and then this is the domain of the function. And obviously the axis of symmetry of symmetry symmetry this graph is shifted vertically so the axis of the symmetry is the y axis right 
So this function can be divided into two from here, right? So what is the equation of the y axis? Is x equals to zero? Okay, guys, I trust this makes sense. Secondly, you guys, let's say you are given um something like this. Let's say you are given we are done with this one. Let's say you are given this. Then here it's 4, then here it's minus 2, then here it's 2, right? Let's say you are given, this is the y-axis, so this is number 3, right? Okay, let's say you are given something like this, and they ask you, um, sorry about that, and they ask you, what is the domain? What is the domain here? So the domain here, obviously x is an element of real numbers. You know, or you can say x is element from negative infinity until infinity, right? This is the domain of the function, and then the range of the function. Now, from negative infinity, negative infinity, the graph exists negative 3, negative 1, 0, the graph exists until 4. So the range, now, let's say this is the graph of y. y is an element from negative infinity so you are coming from the lowest negative infinity go go up 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 zero one two three four at four it ends there right so this is the range of the function now do you guys see that okay so this is the domain this is the range the x of symmetry is still the y axis so it's x is equal to zero so the axis of symmetry guys symmetry divides your function into two you know what i'm saying so that is how we roll now with this thing. Um, you know what I'm saying? And also, uh, let's say finally, okay, don't, don't want to make this video long. Let's say you are given minus x squared plus 4y is equal to 2y plus 6. You know what I'm saying? And then they say you must write it in standard standard form this is the standard form remember it's f of x so you can say y is equals to a x squared plus q you know what i'm saying so f this f of x is y in our case you know what i'm saying okay so you've got this 2y you can bring it this side so okay let me just do it um so you've got uh 4y Take this, this side, minus 2y is equal to 6. Take this, the other side, plus x squared. You know what I'm saying? So 4y minus 2y is 2y is equal to x squared plus 6. Then this continues. You divide by 2 here because of you want to remain with y. y is equal to 1 over 2x squared plus 6 over 2 is 3. So there is your function in the standard form all right guys this concludes um our business as far as the grid tens are concerned with quadratic functions do stay blessed and enjoy the rest of your day